My name is Jerry Cooney. This is Danny Aiello. This is Tony Sirigo from The Sopranos. And this is Ring Fever, where the fans are the stars. You're watching Ring Fever. There is no cure. Huh. <laughs> is that it? Oh, a big left hook. Oh, Watch out, sure. babe. You're the driving force behind this. You allow us to go into so many people's lives and help people that desperately need help. Maybe you're in a situation in life where you have something difficult. You've been dealt maybe a tough hand. Well, Teddy is a great guy. He's a great guy. He is forever fighting for the kid that struggles. He takes care of children, someone who needs a wheelchair, who needs a ride somewhere. I've been here five years, and I'll be here another five. He's saint-like. Apparently, uh, he's following the footsteps uh, of his father. He's the real deal. If I turn anybody down, it's not going to be Teddy. You have been putting money towards Timmy Kelly's college tuition fund for a few years now so if you don't already have a kid in college you sure do now we got 40 celebrities here what's a celebrity they're people that take the time to come out to help other people because they know they can she was in buenos aires earlier today giada Pola grande the GM of the New York Yankees, Brian Cashman. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Cerrone from The Sopranos. Dominic Chinis, a legendary figure in the world of boxing. Lou Duva from The Sopranos. He comes out every year. Let's hear it. Tony Sirico. Gentlemen, Jerry Cooney. He came all the way from Buenos Aires today to be here and make it for Teddy's dinner. Willem Dafoe. And we can continue doing the work that you people allow us to do. I appreciate the hell out of all of you so much. I don't know if you're ever going to understand to what degree I truly do. Here we are with Tony Sirico. Tony, nice to see you. Yeah, pleasure. Before we get onto what you're doing and what's going on, you come here to uh, support Teddy, obviously. A few words about that. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Um, I've been here five years, and uh, I'll be here another five. A lot of people have a lot of foundations, but Teddy pays your rent. Teddy pays if you need food. Teddy also pays a $50,000 operation. That's right, that's right. Teddy, Teddy is for, for our people. I mean, he, he's the real deal. The real, the real give back. Yeah, if I turn anybody down, it's not gonna be Teddy. Real. It's a real pleasure to be here. Cherry, man, you turn, you're just as big as ever, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> look at my pants, look at my pants. Yeah, guy's short pants, see the short pants? One of the best left hooks in the business, right? True? Yeah, well, probably one of, yeah. I love my left hook. I learned it at a young age. My, I saw my brother hit somebody with a left hook, and that's how I became a left hooker. And I, I was a converted southpaw from the start, because the trainer who started me didn't know I was a lefty, and it turned out to be great for me. Obviously, you support Teddy and his mission. Well, Teddy is a great guy, and he is forever fighting for the kid that struggles. And we've been together a long time. We always kick off and help each other. It's all good. I mean, all the celebrities get to hang out, explain, exchange, exchange stories. We get to meet with the celebrities. And at the end of the night, a lot of money gets raised for a great cause. And that's what we're here for. I first saw you in Gemini. Yeah. And that was like the beginning of your career. Yeah, yeah, that was. It, it sort of, uh, it was a wild show. It, it was really acceptable on Broadway at the time. And it played for about two years, but I only stayed at for one year, uh -huh. because I didn't want people to get the idea that I couldn't get a job. 
So, I mean, it's crazy to leave a job that you have, but I had to get out. And, well, pe uh, people love you, Danny. Yeah, well, you they, they've been very kind to me. Oh, they still are. Absolutely. Love. Everybody, Danny Aiello, everybody Thanks, loves Danny. Thanks. But, you know, we're here for a special cause, and well, obviously you support Teddy. Yeah, well, Teddy Atlas I've known for a long period of time, and it's a great, I mean, it, the wonderful things that his father did even before he, that he continues to carry on is very significant for those in need because he helps everyone. The age doesn't mean anything. It could be ancient people in their 90s, 80s, 70s, someone who needs a wheelchair, who needs a ride somewhere. He takes care of children. He's, he's saint-like. Apparently, uh, he's following the footsteps uh, of his father. It's a God and, spirit. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, right now I'm involved with the Lust Garden Foundation so, because my son passed away recently of, of pancreatic cancer. So I really don't put myself in a position to go to any benefits because I don't want people to think I'm a guy who runs the benefits because I'm so involved with the, uh, the pancreatic cancer research with Lust Garden that it gives the people the feeling that is any jumping around to charities, but this is the only one really that I, other than Lust Garden, that I'm involved with. We have a little girl about two years old, and a few months ago she lost her eye, and you guys are buying her a prosthetic eye. You allow us to buy handicap ramps, you bought hundreds of them hundreds of them over the 15 years where children can get outside now that are crippled and they couldn't get outside or senior citizens can get outside now you, you buy the wheelchair where the insurance doesn't pay for the wheelchair you pay for the medication when the insurance doesn't pay for the medication i'm a fight fan since roberto duran and buchanan those days ron lyle foreman the big fights big fight fan that's why i got this company i watched you for many years. I watched you commentate, I watched you host, I watched you train. Your name is synonymous with boxing. What you're doing for these people and with your, the support system you have is God's work. Well, I want I you to elaborate, talk to me. No, I had a father that practiced medicine, general practitioner for 55 years. And you know, sometimes people, they get towards the end of their life and they start thinking, hey, maybe there's something to that story that someone has a key to a gate up there that not everyone gets in. And maybe they start living a little differently towards the end of their life. But my father lived a certain way for his whole life. And I just figured that if for 55 years you are able to take care of people and not just distribute medication and not just look at x-rays and, and do diagnosis, but also care about people, also make sure that it had nothing to do with what they could afford to give. It had to do with whether or not they were sick, whether or not they needed help. And I figured if a guy did that for 55 years, you know what? He wasn't just thinking about the end of his life where maybe there was someone with a key. He actually believed in living that way. And, and I thought a guy that was that committed to that kind of life and that kind of behavior Amazing. should be remembered. So I said, what's a better way to remember him than to start a foundation and do house calls? I wanted not only to remember him for myself, but I kind of wanted people to realize that, you know, if you live a pretty good life, you remember. Right. And I kind of tell people that if, if you are remembered. Whether it's remembered by a kid, remembered well, by the love you have here whatever. Tonight. Look at the love for you tonight. Well, no, I appreciate the heck out of these people. I know. Uh, they're, they're here every year, and they trust me to go and get their support, their resources to the right places. I appreciate that, that trust, and I appreciate the support. It's not me. Like I said in my words up on the dais, I saw that. it's not me. It, it's, it's all these people that allow me to go out there and be able to be there for people on the behalf of a lot of hundreds and thousands of people that care about people. I can't do it without help. And I can't do it without people that care about these things. That, that like, like for example, Willem Dafoe flew in for Ber Absolutely. Buenos Aires. Right. And he didn't have to do that, but he started thinking about it I kind of called him from Russia and I was a little disappointed he wasn't going to be here. And he called my wife and he said, Teddy's disappointed. And he said, can I have his phone number? So he called me in Russia. And 
he said, Teddy, I'm, I'm filming this movie. I, 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 I you can't get out of it. I said, okay. And then next thing I know, my wife calls me back a week later and said, he's getting out of it. And and it's not because of me. It's it's because it just reminded him. Sometimes people just need to be reminded of how powerful they can be and what a difference they can make in someone's life. And it just reminded him that by him coming here, making that effort, and it was definitely an effort, but he could do it. And it would affect people. It would get people to come. It would get people to to give. It would it would help us affect other people's lives. And again, I have. I couldn't move him if those things didn't matter to him. And they mattered to him. He just had to remember that he could do that. He had to remember that he had the ability to actually affect people's lives. That's right, well you did it with all your fighters. You always had that conviction. You always pushed everybody uh, to another limit. In other words, when you think you're down, but you, you can't push you can't. someone who don't want to be pushed. That's true. And, too. and the point I'm making here is all these people here in the room, I Willem Dafoe. Look, Brandon Jacobs from the Giants had practice today. He's got a game Sunday, but he right. still can't. Now look, but it shows he, you he, he could have said, "I'm too tired," and nobody would argue with him. He could have said, "I got to go home." No one would argue with him. He could have said, "I get paid a lot of money to be prepared for Sunday," and no one would argue. But he could also come and still be okay. He could come. He didn't have to, but he could. And that's the part. He realized he could, and he realized why he wanted to, because he knew that it would make a difference. It would help us raise a little bit more money right. to, have, to impact people's lives. And, and because of that, he found a way to do it. A lot of these people, they've, they've been saddled with, with, with diseases. They've been Audience, saddled yeah, with sure. all kinds of Adversity. tragic situations, right. and they need a little help. And, and these people realize as bad as their situations are, they can get through it. And the other people can't. So they make a decision. Okay, I'll put aside the thoughts of how tough my situation is, and I'm going to go and help somebody else. Well, you're, you're moving mountains here, and you've you got a great support system. I want to thank you personally to even be here to, to interview you because I was really touched. And I watched, I'm watching everybody. There's a genuine love. There's a passion and a conviction for what you're doing, and that's what I'm very impressed with, and I, I commend you for that. Well, you know what? Thank you for recognizing those things, the tiny, tiny bit I had to do with it, but thank you for caring about those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Go go to your, go to your family, your friends, and God bless you, man. Thank that's you. all I can say. Teddy Atlas. Teddy Atlas. Thank you. You guys really are champions to be here for 15 years. And to go through all that you go through to carry this foundation, to care about people the way that you care about people. I, you allow us to get people from point A to point B, from a bad place to a better place.